Each one of our experts is on our panel today because they have a special interest in the concepts around understanding opioids, pain management, and spine surgery. So I'm going to ask each one of our panelists to tell us what they're most excited about in terms of what they're seeing on the horizon for managing their patients um, in new ways in, in approaching pain management. So I'll start with you. Yeah, I practice uh, spine surgery in Louisville, Kentucky, which if you look at the density of overdose deaths and uh, dependence, like this is right in the heart of the epicenter of, of where it's a huge problem in the country. And so we're exposed to, our center is exposed to a lot of patients that have been on opioids long term. We've, uh, there's a county north of us where over 50% of the patients in that county are HIV positive because it's an open air market for addiction. What happened is opioids were everywhere, right? There's laws that were passed that reduce them and now patients become dependent and use, uh, you know, street forms of this. So I'm, I'm excited about the change, right? So I wanna see overall less patients dependent and it's important for spine surgeons because we have to rely on these for the most part in a lot of our surgeries. And so, I, you know, again, I'm just excited about change in overall opioid consumption. Dr. Shiva. Yeah, I think it's been touched on a little bit, and I'm just going to amplify it a little bit. Uh, Dr. Wang started talking about this, the idea of precision and now even personalized medicine. Precision medicine is being very specific for the patient's health, their, maybe their genes, maybe their age, maybe their gender. Personalized medicine is now adding in the social factors of healthcare, right? Are they poor? Are they do not have access? Do they speak a different language in front of the country? And I can I can take even myself and five years ago different than I am now. I can take myself and put me in another country and I would have different access to healthcare. So this is very big and very complicated. The the next thing I'm gonna say is another uh, another word that comes out a lot is uh, artificial intelligence. So are there patterns that we're gonna see that I can't see myself? I see five patients in a row and I say, I'm gonna tweak it just a little bit because you're similar to me. But what we may find is that with artificial intelligence, AI, that we'll be able to pick up patterns saying, Dan, this is a very different patient, even though it seems to look like they're similar based on their age or their problem they're coming to surgery with, they're actually very different. And if that can be picked up, we can make it more what, what we call personalized. And that personalization is gonna change depending on the patient, but also where that patient is in their life and in their age. So it's gonna be exciting. We can do more and more minimally invasive than we've ever done before. And as we do that, the incision size is smaller, the blood loss is less, the hospital stay is lower. They're more amenable to having personalized medicine with an ERAS type of a protocol where we can get them in and out with the least amount of opiates. And as that develops with technology over time, we're going to see a, probably a frame shift in how we treat our patients. It's very exciting what technologies come, are coming out. For example, uh, new pharmacologics, yep. uh, new carrier for the for the drugs we use, uh, routes of administration, uh, using you know augmented reality to minimize suffering and pain, distractive methods, and even for example advanced methods of cooling or heating parts of the body to change the local inflammatory or pain response. To me, I think that the technologies are going to move very quickly, offering our patients opportunities to uh, to either use opiates better or to avoid using them.